Police of Reddit. What is the absolute worst crime scene you've come across? Saw a little kid standing on a busy street corner, in the dead of winter, around 2 or 3 years old. Went up to him to talk to him and found out he had been standing out there for an hour or so while a good Samaritan kept eyes on him from across the street in his nice and warm house. Eventually led the investigation back to a battered woman's shelter nearby. The manager recognized the kid and said his mom was upstairs in another room. Went up there and found out she died from a rage overdose a few days prior. Broke my heart to think that kid had been in that room with his dead mother for days with little food or water. Probably crying that his mother wouldn't wake up or talk to him. Dunno whatever happened to him after that. Lost kids are common in my city. But this one wasn't just the forgetful tourist who didn't keep track of their kid while they snapped photographs everywhere. Was intense for a while. As we pulled resources from neighboring counties to put out the alerts for a priority lost child. See. No one explains how stuff like this can affect you when you let it into your life. No one warned me. And freaking heck. Yay. Holding my babies is the only thing that really helps. <laughs> Journalist. Not police. But I was often at the same sorts of scenes. 1. Partial decapitation in a car accident. A drunk kid hit a small car at high speed. Tore the top completely off. Driver's body was still heaving and convulsing in the front seat. Brains and tongues splattered over groceries in the back seat. 2. Hugely obese drug dealer goes into his attic to retrieve his stash. This is in Georgia in the summer. Collapses from the heat and dies. Takes neighbors a few days to notice the smell. Takes a few more before they figure out where, exactly, it's coming from. The police had to cut a hole in the roof of the house to pull his bloated corpse out. He fell apart into goo as they were doing it. The smell was insane even a quarter mile down the road, once the roof was opened up. 3. Woman who had been killed by a serial killer. Unofficially, the cops on the scene said they had seen this sort of thing a number of times so they thought it was a serial killing. Was never proven. She was a prostitute and he had beaten her to death and then tightly packed all of her orifices with dirt before dumping her. 4. Train versus car. A mom tried to beat a train with her kids in the car. Train was too fast. When I got to the scene there was a child's head just sitting on the ground. Completely normal except for the fact that his was detached and the body was nowhere in sight. People who try to beat trains are idiots. I'm no cop. But my stepfather wanted me to tell his story. Here goes. My father got a call about a car crash. Usually they're pretty bad, but this one was the worst he'd ever seen. The car had two parents, and four kids inside. The parents were pulled out immediately, and neither had serious injuries. They were both understandably scared about their children, so he put on some rubber gloves and went into the flipped car. All of them were dead, and none were clean deaths. The youngest spine was protruding from his back and the oldest was missing most of his head. Another had his face mangled by debris, and the last one was cut in the abdomen by his cest belt, and there were a fair amount of organs hanging out. He had no clue what to do. He didn't want those parents to see that, so he wrapped them up inside of the car. When the mother saw the smallest one come out in a bloodied blanket, she fell to the ground and just screamed. The father walked up to grab the child, and my stepfather just said sir, I don't think you want to see this, and the father just started to wail unlike anything my stepdad had ever heard. I'm so sorry, he choked out, and after they'd taken the bodies, he was there to clean up and investigate. While he was searching, he found a small, bloody sock sitting on the ground. He told me it was the only time he'd ever cried on the job. In his words, I've seen grown men blow their brains out. I've seen people beat their spouse until their face was mush. Heck. I even had to reach into someone's chest cavity once to resuscitate them. But I'll never forget those kids. God bless your daddy. I hope he finds peace. I'm not in law enforcement, but ended up working very closely with them on one case that presented to Maya. A newborn infant had been microwaved by her mother's boyfriend because she wouldn't stop crying after he sexually violated her when changing her diaper. The baby's uncle found the baby, and got enough neighbors gathered to set the boyfriend on fire. Police came in first with the baby. They gave me a heads up that the boyfriend might follow but they decided to wait for ambulance to show up and transport him. <laughs> Probation officer for violent sex offenders here. I've got a few I could add to this but this one sticks with me as the worst. 
A doctor in the children's department at a very popular hospital was raping the preteen terminally ill girls during the night shift. This went on a couple times a month for years before he was finally caught. One of the girls lived longer than the doctors expected and complained of pains. During an inspection they discovered the rape and posted cameras which eventually caught him. He ended up getting probation because he a could afford great lawyers who got him in front of a sympathetic judge and b most of his victims were dead. He'd up the pain meds before the act so that there would be less resistance. The court never knew the extent of his deviance, but after I finally got his polygraphs back we learned the full story. He eventually died in custody after we got him on a violation. I'm not a cop, but a good friend of mine is and he recently told me a story. A few weeks ago he got a call to a homicide. A 25 year old male had killed a 63 year old male. The victim was a father to a 17 year old high school girl. The girl had recently began dating a known thug drug dealer. The girl's parents had tried to tell her she couldn't date him, but she did it anyways as an act of rebellion. Long story short, the guy stabbed the father about 30 times with a chef's knife found in the owner's kitchen after an argument ensued. The argument was over him not dating his daughter. Looks like dad was right. When my buddy, the cop, showed up he said the whole kitchen was literally covered in the man's blood. He said the corpse looked like a sliced cow carcass. Both the girl and her mother were sitting in their dad husband's blood crying hysterically. And this, kids, is why you listen to your parents. Cop here. Not the worst crime scene but an interesting one. I was dispatched to a call where the wife found her husband unresponsive in his office. I show up, the room is dark, and I find the man in his chair in front of his computer screen. The screen is off but I can hear that the fan on the PC is still running. Anyhow, the guy is elderly and is obviously dead. His right hand is seized up into a jacking off position and his fly is down with the Vienna sausage limp and exposed. Obviously this dude had a medical episode while whacking the weasel. At this point the wife is completely unaware of the circumstances surrounding her husband's death due to the room being dark, his close proximity to the desk, and her reluctance to approach the body. Some time passes, the Emmy shows up with body removal and the guy is wheeled away. As I am wrapping up the scene and the wife is in another room with family, my curiosity gets the better of me. I know for a fact that at his age the guy needed some visual stimulus at a minimum to prime the pump. Remembering that the computer was on, but the screen had shut off, I reached for the mouse. When I moved the mouse, the screen turned on to holy dear god of all that is horrible on the internet. Let's get one thing straight, as a male, I have seen my fair share of what is out there in the naked world, but what popped up on that screen was about 20 open tabs of the darkest p the darkest parts of the web has to offer. What struck me most was the amount of painful looking gay torture p this guy had open. Not going to lie, at this point I felt like a teen again afraid my mom was going to walk in at any moment. I was at a crossroad. Do I break the news to his grieving wife and family a couple rooms over? Heck no. I closed all those tabs and hope this guy was browsing on private. To dead guy, I hope that I was a bro for you even though I didn't know you. And if anyone ever finds me in that same situation please do the same for me. RIP dead guy. Not in the police, but I just finished serving on a jury for a capital murder trial a couple of weeks ago. Basically a guy beat his 2 year old son to death and during sentencing it came out that he molested his 4 year old daughter as well. As part of the trial we had to view all the forensic photos of this poor kid. 84 bruises, 15 broken ribs, head contusions, brain hemorrhage, lacerated intestine, and the list went on and on. Most of the jurors were shaking with rage when we returned to the jury room that day. Your honor, we find the defendant guilty of all charges plus some more we just came up with. We also sentence the defendant to death by disembowelment. Um, that's not how this works. I wasn't on the call itself but was relieving units who needed a break. They were dispatched to a home after the father came home to a grisly scene. Apparently him and his wife were having marital problems. They had three kids. Not sure what the issue was but the next day after a huge argument the husband went to work. While at work the wife said I'll show him. She took his loaded shotgun and while the kids were napping shot them one by one. First the toddler, then the middle child. The oldest woke up, she consoled him until he fell back asleep and then shot him as well. 
Then she left a heartfelt note about how it was all his fault that she did this. She then blew her head off in the foyer for him to find when he got home. He came home to losing his entire life. That one was one of the most disturbing and vile things I've ever experienced. I've grown to feel numb to almost anything due to this job but that one still makes me sad. I'm not sure what happened afterwards but I believe he killed himself months later. We can blame him. I'm a bit late to the party, but here goes. My stepfather worked traffic homicide for years and encountered any number of frankly gruesome things. But the story I remember really sticking out in my mind involved a car hitting electric pole on a rainy night. The car's occupant had, in the course of the accident, become decapitated, had sheared completely off. The electric pole was severely damaged, one of the lines breaking and falling down to rest in a puddle, which now also contained the severed head. The electrical charge was, apparently, causing the head to bounce and sizzle in a very disconcerting fashion, to put it lightly. Not completely what OP is looking for, but a horrible scene nonetheless. My grandfather's friend was a truck driver for many years, and on one night while he was driving, a car swerved across the median and hit his truck head on. Killed everyone inside the car, and to make it worse, they had just crossed into America legally so this small sedan had about 6 more people than it should have held stuffed into hollowed out places. So when he hit the car, a red mist just exploded out. He had people stuck up under the hood of his truck and it was a huge mess. Fricked him up for a while. Probably fricked up any responding officers too. I had an old co-worker who used to drive the 18-wheeler for our company and had a man commit suicide by walking out in front of his truck. He could no longer drive or ride in a vehicle after that. Would ride his bike or walk to work. I hope your grandfather's friend ended up being somewhat okay after. I'm sure it's hard to come back from that. I once went to a scene where her ex-boyfriend show up at the house where the girl lived. He knocked and then started firing a shotgun through the door, hitting a toddler. He then went in and shot the girl's mother. I still remember chunks of flesh and underarm hair stuck to the wall. Shot the father and then left. The girl was out for the evening. He then left the gun and a suicide knot at the top of a bridge. He went on the run instead of killing himself and was captured shortly thereafter by the marshals. Fricked up scene. I posted the same story on a similar topic a while ago, but here goes. Several years ago I attended a student state police academy, ages 15-17. One of the students asked our drill instructors what were their weirdest calls. A few funny ones went by, like a trooper stopping a box truck loaded from the bottom to top. Every square inch filled with dead goats and then having to figure out who to call to make sure this isn't a health core violation. The final state trooper to respond to their weirdest call story was probably one of the more tougher, more serious and older drill instructors. At the time, he was a trainee assigned with a field training officer. The pair of troopers respond to a neighbor's complaint and were greeted at the residence by a heavily inebriated male individual, completely nude besides a small tutu dress around his waist. At this point, this imagery produced a few snickers in the group. He went on to say that the individual had an erection with blood all over, but no visible signs of a cut. Upon further inspection, the troopers found, stuffed under the kitchen table, an unconscious three-year-old, bleeding from the anus, because the inebriated individual was her father, who had just finished raping her in his drunken state. While that in it of itself is an image nobody should see, I'll never forgot the trooper's description of having to restraining his field training officer from blowing that guy's brains out. The FTO drew his firearm and put it right to the guy's head and was probably going to blow this guy's brains out if the trainee had not tackled him. That's some real emotion right there. It's easy for us to sit in hindsight and say we wouldn't have shot this guy. That's against the law, but in the heat of the moment, would you have? It goes to show you that under stress, anybody, anyone, can do anything. Also we'll never forget people's mild laughing smiles going completely stone cold serious when the story progressed. Literally like a bomb went off. For me it was like time froze. I don't remember anything but visualizing that story even though I know it was 100 degrees out. And we were all just sitting in the grass getting bitten by bugs enjoying the moment up until then. Unfortunately, for many in police fields, that's the sad reality of it. And if that doesn't send shivers up your spine, I don't know what could. God bless those that deal with these people. 
Sometimes you wonder why these cops look grumpy and all serious, but after a story like that I've learned to look at these people and see in their faces they've seen heck. My father-in-law is a retired state trooper. He was called to respond to the two-vehicle accident near his home. That's where he spent his final minutes with his wife before she died trapped in her vehicle. There was a post on here a while ago from a cop where some guy grabbed a baby, put it under his arm and ran at the wall using the baby's head as a battering ram. The baby somehow survived and the guy was arrested. A bunch come to mind. Hard to rank them because they are also unique. One was a 95 year old lady who lived alone and stopped answering phone calls from her son. He went to her house and found her about a week later. She died while in the bathtub. Her head was resting on the edge of the tub, looking up, with her mouth extremely wide open. She had hundreds of bugs pouring out of her eyes, nose and mouth. It was straight out of a horror movie, you could smell it from the front porch. I felt really bad for her son. No one should ever have to see their mother like that. Posting on the behalf of my friend sitting next to me. Worst crime scene I've been to was 6 month year old baby being thrown out a 6 story window because the mother believed she was possessed by the devil. Friend's dad is a cop. Keep in mind this was during a really bad ice storm a few years ago, and in the country, about a good 15-20 minutes from a town, and wasn't a very busy road. Got called from a woman saying she hadn't talked to her mom in a few days, which was weird since they talked every day. Went to go check on her, drove up to the address and saw a truck sitting in gate, got out and walked up, didn't see anything in or around the truck, decide to walk past, that's when I saw it, old lady was by the mailbox, she fell into a puddle and had literally frozen over, fire department had to come to basically burn her out, then I decided to walk up to the house after calling in what happened, door was slightly open, I walked in and announced myself, no answer, walked around, and her husband had died staring out the window at her, he was handicapped and in a wheelchair, didn't have any power in the house for a week, and didn't have a cell phone. He died watching his wife freeze to death. Dear god this is sad. This is a story I got from the local police lieutenant during an interview for a college paper. It was Halloween night, and my campus has a somewhat notorious Halloween party throughout town. Police actually walk the streets in riot gear that night, and normally get a lot of nice costumes, dudes. Anyway, they get a call to break up a fight at a house party. They arrive and are trying to push through all the drunk people to find who's actually fighting. They got to the fight, which was actually taking place the next house over on the sidewalk, but a second too late. They watched as one kid pushed the other in front of a speeding tow truck, basically causing this kid's body to explode into a bloody mess. I think the kid who pushed him got involuntary manslaughter or something like that. Not police. I am a student studying crime, went to a lecture given by the head of the missing person department in our country, it's not the worst the guy has seen, he has investigated the type of serial killers that kidnap, rape and murder underage girls in his basement, but it was the story that stuck to me the most, a 6 year old girl went missing, search teams couldn't find the girl, all leads ended up nowhere, eventually after 2-3 weeks of the girl being missing, they find her. Dead body in the trunk of a parked car in a random parking lot. He said that in the missing person's business this is good news. Because bad news is better than no news. After finding the body they drove to the parent's home. He said that when you drive up onto the driveway and are about to open the car door. You realize that 10 seconds later you are going to knock on their door. And 10 seconds after that they are going to open that door and you are going to destroy those parents lives. Attended scene autopsy of a 13 year old who was hunting with his 11 year old brother and accidentally shot him dead center in the back of the head with a slug meant for deer. The kid looked bad enough when I got there and had already expired, his face looked like a fasahugger if you want context. Feel really really bad for the brother as he attempted to do CPR and stuff. Obviously in a panic as his brother was likely just expelling blood everywhere and not actually still alive. This poor kid will not only remember shooting his little brother but actually seeing the aftermath and putting his face on it. Obviously far worse for the kid than anyone else. This one's a bit of a cliche, and not really a crime scene. Few months old DOA. Elderly women with no family, just two dogs. Family out of state asked for us to check on her. 
got into her apartment, she had been dead a few months, other than the smell, the sight of her eaten off fingers, by the starving dogs that were there. I'm going to guess you mean a cliche, a clique is a group of people, tragic, though, old folks living alone seems to not be a good idea. Cop friend of mine was first on the scene to the monkey ripping that woman's face off in CT, he had serious PTSD after that. I work at a police department reviewing old cases, I'd say the worst I've ever come across, so far, was an older man who was found dead in his home by his son. Doesn't sound too bad at first, until you see realize that he was found kneeling next to his bed, pants around his knees, playboy on the bed in front of him, and dong still in his hand. Dead two days and found by his son mid fap. Actually you would be amazed by how many corpses are found photographed partially or fully naked. A lot of them are found in the bathroom with their pants down, collapsed onto the floor with poop in the toilet on the floor on the person. I'd say 80% of our untimelies are found partially naked with poop somewhere nearby. Currently just a volunteer, but hoping to hold the official title and role soon. A few months back there was a call out to someone who had jumped in front of a train. Fairly certain it was done purposefully, but no one knows for sure, and I haven't followed up on it. A lady had her legs severed, and her stomach area was caved inwards. Sort of like in those cartoons where their stomachs are flat against the road after being run over, but with more intestines and stuff that had burst out of various exit points from the pressure, was given the option to go home for the day after that, but decided to stay. Some guy later in the day called us, good for nothing pigs, which made me realize how quick people are to judge us, without even knowing what we do or have to deal with, was very new to it at this point, not a good day. And police. 1. Man who had his head chopped away down to his chin by a M head with a tobacco knife. Said M head had previously been cutting the grass with the knife, before flipping his lid and removing the victims. 2. Fatal wreck where a man hit a loaded dump truck head on. His vehicle disintegrated pretty much. He slid on the pavement, grinding his legs off to the upper thigh. Scattered most of his body along the roadway. 3. An elderly man died while under a heating blanket. Cook low and slow for a couple of days. 4. Lady died in a bathtub. This makes people stew. Water bodies suck. It goes on and on. They all have their little quirks that make them the worst in their own unique special snowflake kind of way. Not me by my police trade school teacher told me a story of such a fricked up crime scene he was a part of. There was this beautiful woman could have been a model, and she was naked in the floor of her hotel room her head not attached to her body and blood everywhere. The entire hotel was a crime scene and my teacher kept seeing cops sneak in to see the hot dead chick and my teacher who had command was furious. He kicked them all out and tried to do his job. Until his higher up, I think a lieutenant, came in by asking around I heard the hot headless chick was here. Since he was a higher rank the second he stepped in he took command of the scene and my teacher never did find out what happened except some cops care about seeing a hot corpse than doing their job. I'm pretty sure being headless takes a corpse from hot to not. The Icicle Man. Outside of smaller city in Idaho, Pop. 27k, is a kind of shanty town affectionately known as welfare. The only business is a little convenience store a lady runs out of her house. Welfare, it has at least a 90% unemployment rate. Anyways, it's the dead of winter and around minus 20 degrees F. Get a call about a missing persons. A man of 70 hasn't been seen or heard from in over month. Get to his trailer home and come across the following scene. Man's gas had been shut off due to lack of payment but electricity was still on. Man had water bed with an electric heater to warm the water. Looks like man had been stabbed on the bed. He rotted down to essentially a soup-like consistency. His liquefied remains had dribbled off the edge of the heated water bed to form intricate icicles off the edge. The icicle man was the absolute worst. Former paramedic here, was called to a murder scene, not for the victim, but for a rookie female cop who starting vomiting and then became catatonic at the scene. A woman had killed her husband with a blast from a shotgun. He was drunk, naked, and farted right in her face at the dinner table. She got the gun, shoved it into his stomach, fired, and blew the back half of his torso away. Then, after he was already dead, she put it in his mouth, and blew his head off. The cop was unable to continue, 
and resigned a few days later. My dad used to work the. He told me about how they figured out the cartels used to use stillborns and orphans to traffic drugs. They would kill the kids and preserve them so that they could stitch C and H inside their bodies. They would hand the stuffed kids off to a girl that looked like a mom and they would pretend their kid was sleeping when they were crossing a border. Went on for years until a drug dog attacked one of the stuffed infants and sees snowed everywhere. I was on vacation in Tokyo a long time ago. Strolling through the streets one day I came to a train crossing and several pedestrians stopped as the train approached. One guy, a mid-fifties salaryman in a cheap suit, turned to me, put his finger over his lips and said SHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHH